look at my little tiny ponytail <laughs> back here. I got my hair cut yesterday. Had to get all that dead stuff off, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. I know you're going to say something. I said something in a previous video that I filmed today. I filmed three videos today, and I'm not sure what order I'm going to put them up. Farming video with all, about all the things going on with the mama rabbit. Uh, and, of course, we have what I'm about to do here. And then I'm sure I, I'm going to get a lot of good comments about the video where I readdress some comments that I've gotten in terms of the um, men's conference debacle that everybody's been talking about the past couple of days, but you know, whatever. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. I hope that you are having a beautiful Friday afternoon slash evening. Yes, three videos today. I'm trying to catch up on all the things that have been going on. The news is moving so fast. It's impossible to talk about everything. It's impossible to even think about everything. Uh, but we try to, I try to, we talk about a few things, but then we have to bring it back around town and focus in on the things that we can do our best to control. That's how crazy it is. You know that as well as, as, as I do. So I hope you're going to have a wonderful weekend. Uh, my baby boy, my babies of baby boy uh, tomorrow is going to be 19 years old. Can you believe that? Happy birthday, Gabriel. Can you believe that? I can't believe it. That's crazy, crazy. But I've been looking at some things today, and I think it's important for us to keep up with a lot of certain topics uh, in terms of what we're looking at economically, because I think that that really, truly, uh, it, it, it grounds us when we talk about the reality of what people are going through financially what the economy is doing, um, because that affects everybody, okay? I mean, it's easy for somebody to say, oh, well, you're just a homesteader. You should be talking about baby rabbits and milking goats. Well, no, um, if I can't afford goat feed or if my husband lost his job today, I might have a problem running my homestead. I'm just saying. And that should be, and most likely is the case for everybody out there that you, whether you know them personally, whether they're your neighbor, whether they're on YouTube, Instagram, or whatever, whoever you follow. Um, I can tell you right now that I am a major advocate of not quitting your job. Okay. My husband works a full time, more than full time job, has never stopped working, even through um, some health issues continue to work, 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 work. We're doing great. That's no problem now. But my point is, is I do not advocate for anybody, especially I never have. If you've been with me for the last 10 years, I've, I've always said homesteading, farming is the last thing on earth that is for free. Um, and that I personally feel uh, that one, at least one person, if so, and nowadays it's both, um, should have an act do the best that you can to try to find and have and keep a stable outside income because it's a lie when people say that all the things that are happening geopolitically, economically are not affecting the farming and agriculture uh, community. That is a lie. So I don't advocate for that. I think that, you, you know, I see people that say I quit my job because I couldn't make videos. Well, I have a different take on that. I think maybe, and some of you guys too might as well, maybe I'm just older than some of these people. If, if, if they're financially set, debt free, doesn't matter, um, whatever, they won the lottery and then they do YouTube or whatever on the side and they're making it, well, that's great. Um, but then I go, well, what are you doing for health insurance and everything else in between, which isn't so great anymore. Um, I just don't advocate for that. I find that dangerous for a family and for a farm, and especially if there's children involved. So this is what I'm saying. I think it's important that we talk about these things because whether you like it or not, it absolutely affects me and you, my children, my farm, my cows, your pigs, your chickens. I mean, when you're paying, what, $17 a bag or $15 a bag or up to 20 something. I mean, look at the comments that I get in terms of cost of feed alone. Some of it's gone down a little bit, but not too much. Okay. So how are you supplementing that? So it's important for us to talk about things uh, because it continues to open the eyes of people out there. So I've seen some things today floating around and I want to mention them to you. Now you need to do your own homework. And by the way, again, 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 welcome back to the channel. I've missed you. Hope you've had a great week. Give me a hug. Okay. It's because we're going to talk about some hard stuff. It's not a shock to me, but I am going to mention this because I think it's another sign and signal for those of us that are like, is the economy really that bad? Okay. Um, 
one of the places here in the south you know i'm from east tennessee uh one of the places that we always have had throughout my lifetime uh growing up you know a place where you could go as a family and eat uh simple things that most people here enjoy wasn't super expensive you didn't have any shenanigans you just enjoyed it, it was cracker barrel uh, we have seen over the last couple of years that Cracker Barrel uh, has become quite um, woke uh, in, in many ways, which I think has hurt their business probably because today I saw something floating on Facebook and I thought, is this just one of those ad weird ad, you know, titles trying to get you to click on it? Uh, and it's talking about the struggle of Cracker Barrel itself um, and will it be in our future? Now, I have to say that I am not a, I have eaten at Cracker Barrel um, probably three times in the last two years, um, simply because, you know, my attitude was it's quick and easy. Uh, we know what they've got. It used to not be that expensive and it has completely changed. I mean, when you're seeing beer and mimosas being sold at Cracker Barrel, you know they're really reaching for a different or new clientele because the old one ain't there no more. Okay, a bowl of pinto beans uh, it, it, because of inflation and who knows what else. I mean, if you just order a simple bowl of pinto beans, I think it's like $6 and change for a bowl of beans. Okay, now I want everybody to be successful. I understand businesses are hurting because of inflation, which is exactly what we've got going on here. But that is unbelievable. Um, so here's what I know. So in the past couple of years, like I said, that we've eaten there, uh, after COVID and, in, in, in past that, um, we thought that it was horrendous. Um, the biscuits were awful, um, which, you know, you should make my biscuits instead. <laughs> A little plug there, right? I, honey, I can teach you to make, the, don't worry about no, that, that ain't no standard. They're okay. But they got smaller and they were like little hockey pucks. Um, and then we noticed that when they brought you the biscuits, if you got the biscuits, uh, you had to ask for them prior to, you know, it used to be you just got them. And then we've noticed that you had to kind of ask for them. Can we get the biscuits or cornbread prior to the meal maybe? And it was like, okay. And they would bring it out. They wouldn't even bring you those little plates. They stopped doing that for some weird reason. Uh, you'd have to put your biscuit on your napkin. So they wouldn't... We, we found that to be strange. Then the menu changed. Obviously, prices have gone up. And I find it weirder that I just... If you want to drink mimosa, I don't care. But to see it at Cracker Barrel or beer and all these weird things, I'm like, when did we become a bar? It's so strange. So, I looked it up. I Googled it, and you can Google it as well. Because, I mean, there's a bunch of articles talking about the struggle of Cracker Barrel alone from 2023. And apparently, it's pushed into 2024. Um, I can tell you right now, I think this is a huge indicator of people making different decisions uh, because of uh, policies. Uh, I mean, you want to go in there, listen to a little Alan Jackson, look at some antiques on the wall, you know, walk around the country store. You might pick up some candy or something, you know, some, some divinity candy that's hard as a brick, you know, whatever they sell. You know, eat your stuff, hee-haw, hee-haw, uh, play, play the peg game, and, you know, just... Look at the fire. Let's go. Let's go rock in the chair. It's pr nice, a pretty white chair. You know, whatever, and and go home. When you have all these things just pushed in your face all the time, that's a turnoff for people. Uh, they just don't want to. They just don't. They just don't want that, and they're not going to pay for it. But then on top of that, as the articles that I've seen, you're talking about basically inflation. Definitely, who's going to pay almost six six to seven dollars for a bowl of beans? I mean, even with going and buying dry beans. I mean, I can go get on a good day. I can go buy a bag of bean, pinto beans. I can still snag a pa 16 ounces around here of dry beans for about a dollar. So for me to buy just a little bowl of beans for $6 and change, while it's cheaper than everything else on the menu, maybe, maybe, um, it, unless you want a, a, just biscuits alone, um, that's a stretch. So be watching for all of these large chains. Um, there's also issues. I saw an article about two weeks ago about Texas Roadhouse and how much their prices are, have gone up. I mean, it's crazy uh, how much their prices have gone up as well. I'm not a huge fan of Texas Roadhouse. I don't mind it, but it's not one of my favorite places if we're going to splurge to eat. I mean, but again, 
Restaurants are really, really, truly starting to hurt. 23 and Me saw this today and uh, shared it on Facebook. You can look into the ins and outs of it. Again, you're looking at an industry which is genealogy and or ancestry uh, is starting to hurt as well. People are not going to pay $100 for DNA tests. Some are still probably. They're not gonna pay the fees to keep doing their genealogy. If you're gonna pay a fee, obviously to do research, Ancestry is going to be much better because they're the ones with more records and then you can have um, access then also to Fold3, which I find incredibly helpful. So, you know, if you're going to have a splurge or you're going to do things, you can do a lot of this stuff for free at your local libraries as well. So I'm just letting you know that that's a possibility. But 23andMe has basically been pulled out of the dumps. It is majorly struggling. It talked about how their stocks have gone down, how much money they've lost. It talked about how a lot of people during the health crisis, um, they were doing a lot of uh, DNA tests and research and things like that. Well, people can't afford to do that stuff anymore. I mean, or they, or they, they're done with it. They did it. And I'm all about ancestry and all of that stuff. But I'm just saying, look at what's going on. And I do believe you have some controversy with some of these places with their data breaches as well and leaks and things like that. So you do have to be mindful of that. But again, who would ever, who, would, who a couple of years ago, would you have ever thunk that you would be see, see things like Cracker Barrel having some problems or 23andMe? Sign of the time, sign of the time. Today, you're looking at a lot of layoffs in basically the, in the corporate level of Nike. Now, again, we're getting into people making decisions. Uh, if you're going to stand by this, it goes against what I think you should be standing for, then I'm not going to support that. I think you're seeing a lot of trickle-down effect from people going, you know what, I've got Nike tennis shoes. Uh, I've got a Nike ball cap. I'm going to wear them out, but it doesn't mean I have to buy it again. Not to mention the cost. I mean, people are going to be looking for as many alternatives as they can in terms of athletic wear okay I mean I certainly don't get too fancy <laughs> with my athletic wear so I don't care if it's got a name brand on it or not if it's comfortable and I can function and I can run then so be it now I do have Nike tennis shoes I will tell you that I do I don't deny that but I will tell you with some of the recent again recent shenanigans that I have seen I had already told James I said I won't be I will not be, be buying Nike again I did that because they were the most comfortable at the time and they were the least expensive so I did make a decision based upon that but I will tell you I'm prepared for next time to not so uh, that's my personal decision but I'm saying here we are did you ever think such a massive giant would be needing to lay off cut corners sign of the times now it wasn't that long ago that we were talking about cocoa I think it was just a couple of weeks ago and some of you were like I don't care who cares about cocoa beans who cares you should care uh, do you, I mean, if, if you're like anybody, most people to some degree like or can tolerate or choose to add some form of chocolate uh, to something that they're doing, dark chocolate, whatever, whatever. But we talked about several weeks ago that um, they were talking about hyperinflation with cocoa, okay? And they were talking about it being what around just over $10,000 a pound. Now today, the article came out today, I believe this is on Zero Hedge, 12, the, it's 12 thousand dollars per ton so it was ten thousand dollars per ton don't know what i just said i made ten thousand ten thousand dollars per ton now it's twelve thousand so now you're entering again into this massive conversation of hyperinflation now what they're saying is is that even though prices may go up people aren't necessarily pulling back from buying chocolate right okay but what they're worried about this is what they call it watch for demand destruction demand destruction i can tell you right now i have massive demand destruction okay i'm not a huge chocolate person to begin with so it's no major loss for me however i will make i will pick and choose let me give you an example if i'm going to make some of my homemade muffins that i like to sprinkle in i like a little handful or so of the little mini chocolate morsels okay well if my recipe calls for let's say a cup okay i'm not doing that i'm going to put in a half cup Okay, so by default, probably a lot of you gals out there and guys are doing the same thing. You're cutting back. Chocolate's going to be a major component for that, I think. You're going to go, okay, I can't afford, I'm, I'm just, 
can I afford a $5 Twix, $4 Twix, $3.79 Twix? Probably, but just because I'm not doing that. I, you know, you see these prices. And the major thing that you're also seeing that with, with comes with things like this is the shrinkflation. You might get, you might actually get a candy bar for less than two bucks, a dollar 89. I feel like I've got a cat here. You know, something going on. You know, a dollar 89 or something. Can you believe we're even saying that? I mean, remember when candy bars were two for a buck, right? And you didn't feel like, you, and you got more than two bites out of it. Um, but, they're going to be like teeny tiny. Let me show you. This is what's so funny. This conversation was just happening yesterday. And okay. Guilty as charged. Starburst. <laughs> I've got two Starburst wrappers right here in my door. But this is going along perfect with this conversation. Let me tell you. So yesterday, Gabriel came home from school. I just told you his birthday's tomorrow. And this girl brought him. Um, they had a birthday party in his class. It's it is local college, right? He and his teacher has shared the same birthday so they decided to have after class discussion and prep for finals they brought in you know cupcakes and he and the teacher they, they had a cl you know class time it was fun well a little girl brought Gabriel a nice little goodie bag full of starburst so I try I didn't embarrass him too much as I am you know you know how mom is I'm like ooh, starburst honey this is getting he's like shut up mom <laughs> So I said, he said, do you want them? I said, give me one or two. I love, I love, did you not love Starburst growing up? I mean, you know, I know it's sugar. It's okay. We're all going, you're going to make it today. I looked at Gabriel and I said, how small can we make Starburst? Now I know there's those little minis, but they don't wrap them. I'm telling you, those Starbursts that you still buy in the wrappers, here's the red and look here. This is my favorite. <laughs> small as all get out. I mean, it is obvious. They're probably more expensive. I don't know. I haven't priced them out. I don't buy Starburst, but they, I was like, they're, uh-uh, these are teeny tiny. So shrinkflation, you're paying for so much shrinkflation. Also something that I'm noticing as we begin to close this out, and I'm sure you're seeing it too, online, okay, we're in April. Tomorrow is April 20th. Today is April 19th. I'm dating this video. Um, we're just now, for most of the country, really, truly starting to getting into gardening season, okay? You've probably planted some things, cool crops, etc., but you're probably somewhat in the south or you have a hoop house or whatever. Most people are just now kind of getting to that point. They're buying seeds. They're ordering seeds. They're getting starts, uh, you know, whatever they need to do. Seed companies, 50% off, buy one, get one free, uh, X amount off of my tree, the trees, elderberry, all of these things. Why? I don't think they're selling. I think people are working with what they've got or they're not doing anything at all. I think they've been priced out. I think, unfortunately, while I do see some people making a move towards a form of self-sustainability at the same time, if they're living, say, you know, on a, a in, in a neighborhood and they've never gardened before, they're like, what do I need to do to start a garden? They're going to have to build their material, get the materials to build their boxes. They're going to have to talk, you know, what amendments are you going to get? What are you going to do about your soil? Do you need a tiller? Do you need to rent a tiller? You need garden tools. Now you need seeds. Um, it's not as cheap as it used to be. So the question here is, do we see people struggling to even garden like they used to? Now, if you're like me and you've been gardening for years and years and years and you seed save and you know you bought your tools 15, 20 years ago, five years ago, whatever, and you've added as you keep going because you keep doing it, well, then it's easy for me to sit here and say, just go do it. The reality is, is if people are just now starting out or are really trying to expand, depending on how they do it, it, costs money. And if you're talking about somebody that's already struggling to make the house payment and put food on the table, while we are hoping and praying that they do grow some food of their own, it's all down to the brass tacks. So this is what I'm saying. This has come full circle in this conversation. For someone to say that the economic situation is not 
affecting all of us, including the homesteading and farming and agriculture community, that is a flat out lie. This is again why I tell you to be conservative as possible. Save what you can. Don't quit your job because guys, inflation's not going down. Uh, there's so much t discussion in terms of it being sticky. Do you like that? It's as sticky as this little starburst sitting over here, right? The starburst wrapper, whatever. So again, these are the things that I want you to continue to look for. And yeah, I put them on a post-it note, you know, but because the indicators are all around us and we need to continue to try to do the best that we can. My final solution to all of this is the things that I've laid out, but re whether you are gardening or not, I want to encourage you strongly to continue to put away five plus cans or or a bag of beans whatever tuck them away every week okay every single week a can of corn a can of peas a can of pineapple a bag of beans what rice whatever and put it put it on the shelf okay and then keep building keep building keep building it does add up over time guys it's not getting any cheaper okay and we're all bracing ourselves right now for what we anticipate is coming as the, as the weather continues to heat up, as we move into fall, what are gas prices going to do since we've already seen all these shenanigans over in the Middle East? How will that affect us? Will it continue? And oh, what's happening in November? Maybe. It's important that we prepare regardless of who we are, where we are, and what lifestyle we choose. This is a good one but it's not for free. Like, subscribe, and share. I appreciate you being here today. I hope this uh, information helps you out, makes you think. And uh, all, as always, comment down in the comment section and let me know your thoughts. What are you seeing? Uh, it's endless, endless all the time. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to say. Take care out there. Godspeed, God bless. Be peaceful, be praying, keep prepping. Don't stop on the five plus items a week. It can be body items too. It can be toilet paper. It can be pet needs. Try your best to continue to go, okay, I got five things. I got some dental floss, some toothpaste, some, some black beans, some uh, whatever, you know, put it on the shelf, put it away. You will be so thankful that you did. I promise. Guys, Godspeed, God bless. Have a great evening and I'll see you on the next video.